Uh, hello, uh, this is uh, Mr. Bailey. I am giving an intro to um, Dr. King's letter from Birmingham Jail. Um, in my power, I'm actually going to post some links to other resources too. Um, nonetheless, uh, as we've been reading um, seminal, argumentative, and philosophical uh, documents for SAT prep, um, this is one of the most artfully written works in the English language, and, and it's uh, nonfiction of all things. It's a letter um, that Dr. King wrote when he uh, had been arrested in Birmingham, Alabama, for uh, basically protesting against the, the humiliating segregation law. And um, there's a lot more information out there other than my, my two cents here. Um, you know, there's a cool chapter in uh, David and Goliath by um, Malcolm Gladwell that uh, you should definitely check out about uh, the civil rights and uh, movement and Dr. King and a guy named Wyatt Walker. Um, but there's, there's just so much to this. You can probably watch the videos on history.com or Discovery Education about this. Nonetheless, I'm going to uh, specifically address some of the rhetorical elements of it ahead of time. One of the reasons that this is one of the most important uh, rhetorical devices uh, and artifacts in the history of the English language is, um, first and foremost, uh, the organization pattern is that of the classical argument. Um, Dr. King follows that pretty consistently in a lot of his speeches and letters and things like that. And he starts off with an exordium, which is an introduction to uh, his audience and an opening or a hook. He narrates the problem and what brought about uh, the situation. He uh, definitely puts forth a proposition and a partition to his argument, which we'll sh see that when he does the list of things that uh, they did. The confirmatio and the refutatio, um, he presents positive proofs about why his action steps were correct. And he also refutes the negative proofs that other people have been uh, arguing against. Um, and then last but not least, he always closes with a, a peroratio, which is uh, the conclusion or a call to action. Um, nonetheless, you can even see in the first paragraph, his tone is civil and um, it is endearing to his audience. Um, nonetheless, I also use some specific examples of um, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Um, he uses parallel structure so beautifully. He uses elevated diction, like cognizant. Um, so this is the reading that you'll be doing. <clears throat> and I will also talk and speak frankly that this is a long-term reading. This isn't um, something that you read once and then it's over. I would really uh, hope that you reread this because every time even I reread this or teach it again, I find uh, new things, you know, you know, like the nations of Asia and Africa are moving with jet like speed toward gaining political independence, but we still creep at a horse and buggy pace toward gaining a cup of coffee at a lunch counter. You have compare and contrast, you have imagery, jet like speed, hmm, a comparison of two unlike things using like or as, that is definitely a simile. Which, by the way, he uses several similes and metaphors. It's beautiful, beautiful imagery in this rhetorical piece, which is why I'm sending it to you digitally so that you can mark it up. Um, nonetheless, uh, I'm going to let you reach your own conclusion about its greatness, um, but I'll also provide some secondary links about uh, some of the historical background. Uh, a good thing about the, the textbook that we've been using is it does give you enough information that you should be able to reach your conclusions, but there's an awful lot in the civil rights movement in U.S. history that uh, a lot, I was surprised how many students like didn't know some basic facts. So nonetheless, this is the background to Dr. King's letter from Birmingham Jail. Take your time and mark it up. Um, we'll have a discussion thread posted by the end of the week. And um, I'm telling you, this is a really enjoyable piece if you're looking for the imagery, parallel structure, um, use of the classical mode of um, pattern of organization. He also does compare contrast. It's just beautiful. He does process analysis. But I'm going to let you sort those things out yourself. Uh, best of luck and enjoy.